I see you now. Hi, Slavika. Hi, Mal. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Thank you so much for accepting to talk to me today. It's quite an honor. It's a thrill. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Slavika. I'm How's everything over there? It's, uh, it's amazing. I'm living a dream life. And uh, okay. it's a beautiful dream, so I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying every minute of it. How are you doing? You must be thrilled. So your book is out, you're doing signings now. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. I follow you on Facebook all the time, oh, thank you. news and everything. So um, my intention for this video, as for all the videos I'm going to create, is to inspire and empower as many people as possible to live their dream life to know that it's possible, to give them tools, to give them ways to, even if it's just to inspire them so that it, it switches that light in, in many people so that they go, oh, okay, I can, I can do it or I can have a better life. Okay. And so to start, I'm going to ask everybody, so I'm asking you as well to introduce yourself for those that maybe don't know you yet. Um, how would you, who would you say you are as an introduction? Well, my name is Vami Gavrish Jr. I am an author. I wrote a book called The Five Levels of Attachment. And my main job is actually to be a father and a husband. I'm a family man. That's a full-time gig. And then, but uh, I've been working on my book for a while. And I just finished writing a second book, uh, Living Life of Awareness, which is a collection of meditations. And it's exciting, you know, it's, uh, I get to continue on a beautiful tradition that is called oral tradition, which is, uh, <clears throat> you can say that's one of the things my, my beautiful family has uh, been able to offer for many generations. My father does it, my grandmother, my great-grandfather, and my great-grandfather before. We all shared our tradition via this oral tradition, which we share not only lessons of life lessons, but information and knowledge that is, you can say, shared through the generations in our own unique way, as unique as the individuals who teach it. So you can say that is part of who I am in a sense of what I do with my work and how I share uh, in a personal note, I'm just Miguel. Excellent. And tell me, uh... I'm personally curious, and I'm sure many others are curious. How was it to to grow up in uh, in a family, in the Ruiz family, uh, with that tradition and the, the all the Tol I guess you you've been taught the, the Toltec way since you were children, or yeah, it was it was fun and like like my father and my grandma before we all rebelled against it, you know. It's, it's... <laughs> really. Well, yeah, we, we do. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you think about it when you're young, like when you go to school and you read your history book. But you read your history book and you think to yourself, "What does that have to do with me?" <laughs> and when you see it from that point of view as a young person, it, it kind of is this thing that um, you're told what it is, but at the same time, you, you can't. It's hard to tell when you're living it because, one, we're, we live in this modern world. We're engaged with our friends and families. You can say that I grew up in a juxtaposition between my grandmother's faith healing and my father and my uncle's uh, med doctors, med the medical world. My father's uh, a surgeon. My uncle is a neurosurgeon. My other uncle is an oncologist. And my grandmother was a faith healer. <laughs> So you, you grow up with these two worlds, these two different ways of seeing the world. One that is based on spirituality, the other one is based in science. And you grow up with these two worlds. And you can say that who I am is a result of these two worlds. How I, I, how I understand spirituality, how I understand uh, the, the modern world comes from two generations that love one another, you know, that my grandmother's generation with my grandpa and my uncles and my aunts, their generation, and combine them together, you have a whole, a beautiful world where you're free to choose how to live life. So when I was young, 
both worlds were something that you were forced to learn. And as magical as it was, as beautiful as it was, the essence of the lessons of growing up in a Toltec family is living life. The love that we share for one another, the love we have for one another, which I believe a lot of families live through that. The, the thing about growing up with that as well is that even with my apprenticeship, when I started my apprenticeship with my grandmother and my father at the age of 14, my father had already tried to uh, pay me to go to his classes and that eventually didn't work. You know, he'd pay me $5 when I was 12 <laughs> to go to his classes. And one of the things my father realized is that I'm going to have to go through domestication. I'm going to have to face the dream of the planet. I'm going to face all the obstacles because it's my life. It's the reality we live in. And to grow up sheltered from that is going to be a disservice, a complete and total disservice. So he stopped paying me and I started engaging the family, I started playing it. And then I started practicing the traditions. And then the beautiful thing about that is that as I grew up, grew up when I graduated from college, when the bubble of the family burst and you become your own person, your own man, your own woman, you all of a sudden realize that the world is different and you engage it and it begins to teach you life is the real teacher. What my father, what my grandmother, what my teachers at school all gave me these instruments that are applicable once life teaches us because up to that point it's just theory it's just something that you know you, you can do a ceremony you can go to a class and all the stuff you learn is theory it's something that my imagination can comprehend but i have to go into my imagination because that's the only way i can understand it but when life comes in and steps into you it says here here it is Here's your choice. You can go in any direction. Then all these instruments, all these things we learn become practical and we start applying it. An example. In 1997, the book, The Four Agreements, comes out. I pick up the book. I read it. Halfway through, I close it and put it down. <laughs> it's my dad telling me what to do all over again. And... It's helped so many people, but at the time, the filter of the son reading the father's work, to me, I understood it in a totally different way. So, after graduating from college and living life, I picked it up back again in 2002. I read it, and I'm like, oh, I understand it. I get it. <laughs> and not because, not because it's a, a theory all over again, but... I can see it in my life. I can see it reflected in how it functions in my life. And apparently I'm not the only Ruiz brother to do it. My brother Leo just told us that he's only read the four agreements. He hasn't read any of the other books. <laughs> None. But because he has the same concept of us, is that we grew up with this. And he's much younger than me. He's 28. So he's just now starting to read it. But that's the thing, that's the beautiful thing, that even if you grew up in the family of teachers, it means nothing until you put it into practice in life. That's amazing. So that to, to me, that's, that's, that was what it's like to grow up in that family. You know, it's, it's, growing, it's growing up like in any other family. You know, we all, we all see these beautiful traditions, we all see this wonderful work, which is called the Four Agreements. And I can also see it how I could distort it into the four conditions. And I can use it to domesticate myself with them. Concepts that I would, didn't know uh, when I was young, but now I can understand it. Like, oh, I see. I, if, I, if I judge myself for taking it personal, that's a sign that I use it as conditions, not agreements. I've used it to domesticate myself. That in order for me to be perfect, I have to take things not take things personal, not make assumptions, always be impeccable with the word. 
Um, and do your uh, best. Oh, do your best. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm Tommy Gallery's cheaper. How can I call myself that if I don't know before a queen? It's so 